Hey YouTube, I wanted to do a quick video here on CO2 and things to be aware of when setting up CO2 in a tank. Um, not as much how to set up the rig, I'll do a second video on how to set up a rig, um, but this video is more going to be on what, to, what you need to know going into um, a CO2 injected tank. Um, first thing really to be aware of is CO2 parts per million. That is your end goal. With a lower light tank you want to have 10 to 15 parts per million. With a higher light tank you want to have 30 parts per million. Any higher than that and it's too high. Um, why I say that? Because your plants can use up to a certain point but really the guideline has been established is after you hit 30 parts per million the plants don't necessarily use it all. And the problem is at that point is there is 30 parts per million floating in your tank water and your fish need oxygen to breathe. There's only so much space um, that can hold gases in your tank. They're trying to take an oxygen. If you're pushing all the oxygen out of the tank with your CO2 injection, they can't breathe. So you go over 30, you're in danger of doing that. Um, doesn't mean you necessarily will if you're just over 30. But if you go too high, you can gas them out. Um, so that's one thing definitely be aware of. How you really look for that is you'll be watching your tank. Um, you'll notice that the, the fish are swimming at the top, gasping for breath. The vertebrates are just going crazy. If they have shrimp, they're going to go nuts. I've seen them do it before because I almost did it on mine um, when I was first setting up. But that's natural. Um, you know, you, you hope that doesn't happen, but in a lot of cases it will. You'll have an issue when you first set it up. Um, that's something to look for. That's an easy way to tell. But an even easier way to tell is by having a drop checker. It'll give you um, warning before it happens. I actually just got this in today, and I'm pretty excited about it because my other drop checker looks really crappy, and this one is much, much better, and it's made out of glass. So... Not that it'll read any more accurately, but it looks a lot better. So, But what you're looking for is just a standard drop checker. What it's going to do is you're going to put this liquid into the actual little bubble there, and it's just going to sit there in your water. I'll actually show you an example here. Um, I have mine over here on my 10-gallon. It's blue right now because I just reset the uh, CO2 as of yesterday, so it's still filling the tank back up with CO2. Um, but you'll look at your chart, and you'll compare that to um, the color of the bubble, and you'll get a figure out your pH in the tank. So this obviously, yellow is bad, blue is good. Oh, uh, no, 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 that's, that's wrong. <laughs> yellow is bad, blue is bad, actually green is good. Um, if you have blue, your pH is too high. You won't have hardly any CO2 in your tank. If it is yellow, you need to take action quickly. You can gas out your fish. Um, especially if it's a bright, bright yellow, um, be aware of that. So I would say invest in drop checker, especially if it's your first time setting up the tank, because you can look at the tank and you can easily tell, oh, that's where my CO2 is at. That's where it's at right now. It's not going to be perfectly accurate, but it's a great way to tell, especially over the first week. And you can tell when your CO2 is starting to go down over time because the bubble checker, I mean, drop checker will reflect that. The other thing you want to invest in is these beautiful test solutions. Um, a pH and a KH specifically, you won't really need the high-end pH, but I have that out, and the GH you won't really need either, but I have that out as well because it relates to the KH. But the pH and the KH are what you'll be looking at. They're a lot quicker reading than the drop checker. The drop checker is a mixture of the two, and it takes time to adjust, um, as opposed to the pH and the KH. You know, well, test solutions here don't. You can, you can instantly do it, and you'll know where your pH is. I mean, where your pH and your KHS, which will tell you where your CO2 parts per million are. And you just use this chart to figure out where it's at, to figure out if it's in the range where you want it to be. Um, so that's something highly important. A lot of people send a measure every four hours. I actually do suggest that. Um, and some people say you may get them in the middle of the night and do it, and that's actually good to do as well. Um, I actually did it once for mine, and it's it's a good thing to do. Because if you are new to CO2, you run the risk of gassing out the fish. And the, the greatest risk is at night. Because when those lights go off, your, your plants stop taking in CO2. They don't need it. In fact, they give out CO2, the excess that they have, they aren't using. So they put out CO2. Your diffuser is putting out CO2. And your fish certainly are breathing in oxygen, so they're putting out CO2. So your CO2 goes really high in your tank at night, and that's where you can run issues. I actually run an aerator on my 10-gallon. I don't really need to anymore since I've, I've figured out where it's at. 
in my tank so I could actually take it off. In fact, I probably will tonight so I can get my CO2 up. I might put it back on the next night. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But um, an aerator is good to have because it causes a lot of water disturbance or surface disperse, not disturbance. And what that does is it allows the CO2 to disperse. If you have a larger gas exchange on the top of your tank, which is caused by surface movement, so an aerator or a filter, it'll disperse the CO2, which is good and bad. I mean, during the day, you don't want as much surface dis that disturbance because you want the CO2 to go up. As opposed to at night, you want more. So that's why I run an aerator. A lot of people actually do that. And so that's something you can do and don't have to do. Figure out what works in your tank. I'm not saying that it will or will not. Everybody's tank is different. So figure it out on your own. Make sure to take your readings and you'll find out where you need to be. If it's too high at night, possibly put on an aerator or just lessen your CO2 mixture. Um, I'll talk about the mix mixture in the next video. Um, that's really what you need to be aware of in CO2. I mean, the important things are getting your parts per million right. 10 to 15 on a low tank, 30 on a high tank. I'm aiming for 30 in this tank because I have really high light on that, as you can see. So, yeah, that's it, folks. Um, if you have any questions, post a comment in the description. Um, I'll sure to get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks. Bye.